to the scene. It's 1981. I'm a young classical guitar student. And everyone's telling me you've got to get hold of these two albums. I got myself a copy, put it on, and I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. I've heard so many players since this, but never one with such control over rapid breaststroke scales. Um, okay, there are flamenco players that can play faster. And uh, there was a player down at Peabody when I visited in 1988. His name was Yvonne Rijos, and he had the most incredible scales. But with Manuel, it's not just the speed, which he has, but it's also the consistency, the volume, and um, how clean they are as well. This is the incredible thing. If you've ever heard him, you'll know what I mean. And a few years after this, I was going to the Wigmore Hall to hear him live for the first time. I was so excited and I was sitting there wondering, will he be able to do this live? Will he be the same? Will it sound as consistent? It was. I can still remember sitting there watching him play a piece and I knew that one of these fast scales was approaching. And um, I was absolutely amazed because when he came to the scale, he seemed to adopt a completely different right hand position. And this went against what I'd been taught at the time. Um, so it really led me to wonder what should the right hand position be during these fast scales. So my, my teachers at the time were telling me to keep the wrist straight and um, not kink it like this, which is, which is a good, good advice. And um, they were saying during the uh, descending scale, for example, you would tilt from the elbow like this. But this isn't without its problems, and it's not what I saw happening that day at the Wigmore Hall. I'm going to show you some uh, rare and grainy footage of Manuel, aged 27, playing in, I think it's in New Orleans. And um, this was around the time that he was recording these albums. And the piece we're going to hear a little section of is the one that he was playing at the beginning of the album, Villa Lobos Study Number no. 7. And if you watch, you'll quite clearly see the change in hand position that I was talking about. And here's another extract from the same concert. Uh, this was on another album, I think it was on his third album. It's um, the Giuliani Grand Sonata Eroica. And um, this one's interesting because he's playing some free stroke scales. And he's got the, the normal, what I would call the standard hand position. And then he, he goes to rest stroke scales. And you can see again the change in hand position. I was lucky enough to go and study with Manuel um, in New Jersey seven years later in 1988 and I flew over and I had a big notepad full of questions. I was there for about three months I think and the great thing about Manuel and his teaching is that his ideas about technique are really clearly thought out. Everything's logical. It's not, it's not just that he can do it and he, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's really thought about it and he's got answers for any questions you might have. So one of my questions was about what's going on with this change of hand positions in the scales. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So going back to what my teachers were telling me, a straight line along here so that there's no tension, no kink in the wrist. And that's great, but it's great if you're playing I and M on adjacent strings, say. Yeah, that works perfectly relaxed, lovely. But the minute you start playing I and M on the same string, if you look carefully, what's going to happen is the 
eye is going to stretch like this to reach up to the B string or the E string and you're going to have one finger that's bent and another finger that's straight. And this is a really horrible way to, to play. And to, to add to that, the, the movement from the elbow that we mentioned before, I mean, that's a really terrible, <laughs> I don't know how anyone would play scales like that, but you're also going to get this <laughs> scrapey sound as well on the basses. So it's really not a good idea to, to try and do it that way. So how would we find a position where the M and the I are in their relaxed state and the M is finding the top E string and the I is finding the top E string. Well, they're both relaxed now, but look, the I finger is short. It's not reaching. So what we need to do is to bring the hand round like that. And that's how that position is found. Okay. Now, of course, we don't move from the elbow. That's going to feel odd. So the movement is this kind of movement. So you're almost taking, you're almost bringing the hand back like this. So it's not, not like that, but like that. Okay. And then ascending is the same sort of motion. So it's going to feel a little odd at first to, to play your scales in this way. And you might also find that the sound is very thin at first, because if you're playing across the string, you're going to get that sort of sound. But if you, if you tilt like this, you're going to get a thinner sound. But rapid scales, it's not so important to have a thick tone. You know, a lot of fast scales end with a thin sound. It's still going to sound impressive, you know, machine gun style. And, and once you've perfected the, the technique, you can just get away with a little tilt to thicken up the tone like that. So it's a question of finding what you're comfortable with. But um, yeah, that, that's how he found that, that position and that's what, how he explained it to me. So with regard to this, this, this movement, the reason for doing it like that is to keep the angle the same. The angle of the um, I and M. So all you're doing is, is crossing, which is, another, which is another problem which we can talk about later. But um, you, your angle is the same. So the fingers have learned how to pluck and you're just taking them to the string. But if you move them like this, like I said before, it's gonna, everything's gonna change as you go across. So it's, the reason we're moving like this is for consistency, consistency of position. The fingers only have to learn one position to play that way. Now, of course, this is only the beginning of um, scale practice, the, the right hand position. There's many other aspects that we have to look at, the way to develop them, the string crossing. Um, but it's a good start. If you can get that hand position right, that's great. I'm going to be covering some of the other aspects um, in further short tutorials that I'm going to be making. And I'm going to make a whole uh, video tutorial, a longer one, about the whole thing about Appi and scale practice with some exercises. And that's not ready yet, but it will be on my website probably halfway through 2019. So if you're there, have a look at the description below and um, you, can, you can click on that to get to it. And I hope this has helped you as much as it helped me back in 1988. If you haven't already, do check out the albums. They're on Spotify, iTunes, and you can buy Manuel's first four albums on this box set. It's called 300 Years of Guitar Masterpieces. I grew up with these albums, and I do feel that they are really important recordings, especially the first two. Nothing like this had been heard before. And I'm not convinced that this kind of level has been achieved since, but that's only my opinion. Please let me know all the different ways that you've approached the, the same problem. Uh, leave your comments in the box below, that anything that might help. And um, don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. And of course, hit the subscribe button and uh, you won't miss any more of these short tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.